Welcome to our listeners today. We have another exciting topic on estate administration, um, one that executors might face uh, quite often. Um, so when testators start drafting their wills or draft their wills, they often do so several years before their passing, and they may write in their wills that they want specific items to go to specific people. But when they pass away, those specific items may no longer be owned by them. Perhaps it's a piece of artwork that they gifted already during life, or maybe it's a, a property that they sold and purchased another property with. Um, so we wanted to talk today about what happens if those items are missing? What does the executor do and, and where should they, you know, even start with deciding whether to try to still give a gift to the beneficiary listed in the will? Yeah, and I think the uh, the concept here would, I mean, a couple of uh, opening comments would be, it's not something that, it does come up in the state administration, um, but I think with proper planning, it can be easily avoided. And, it's, and, and oftentimes the scenario would be, well, try not to be that specific, right? Uh, because that, that inherently creates the problem. Um, and then number two would be, if you're going to be specific in your estate planning documents, then you ought to do a regular review of them and make sure that stays current, right? And then really update that as your circumstance change. If you're saying I'm giving the grandfather clock to Jane, well, what if you got rid at auction of the grandfather clock five years before you pass away? Well, the the law is that gift edems. There's an, the principle of redemption, um, which is if the deceased did not die owning it, then it it's not capable of being gifted because you can only give away what you own. Um, so if somebody disposes of something, uh, you've got to be careful. That would in that example, it would be appropriate for a person to say, "Oh, you, how come you didn't update the will and say?" um here's here's what happens in that circumstance or take that clause out right because you are you know it's it's sold or maybe the just you know the 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 testator already gave it to jane right in her in his or her lifetime uh so jane already has the clock i've had to, and i've had to do that i had a case years ago it doesn't happen often but it was a poorly drafted will somebody had literally two and a half pages in the will of gifts Wow. You imagine the cost of the registered mail for all those gifts. It was <laughs> it was obscene because um, everybody gets a notice saying you were in the will listed for this, even though we knew everybody already had the stuff. What happened about two and a half years after she wrote the will, she was getting older and downsizing, moving into a care facility, into a nursing home. And then she just read her will and she just gave those items to everybody. But they all had to go. Th we had to go through the administration process of notifying them because they had an interest in the estate as per the will. So that's an example where um, she no longer owned it. Thankfully, it went to into the right hands. But it sometimes says, well, what if it went to somebody else? And Jane is all upset saying, I was supposed to get the grandfather clock. And one of the things that the executors can potentially face is a claim to say, well, if I don't get the clock, I want the value of the grandfather clock. Well, that grandfather clock was worth $6,500. So dear executor, I want a check for $6,500 because that was the intent of the deceased was to make sure I benefited. So I get either the proceeds of what it sold for or the cash equivalent. So you got to read the will carefully to say, what does it say? Because sometimes it'll have a what if clause. It'll say the grandfather clause goes to Jane. But if I don't own the grandfather clause, then this is what happens. Right. So that there, there could be specific direction, but usually it's the absence of direction that creates this legal problem where parties have to go to court potentially and 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 and, and make a determination. Another example might be, well, what about the money from a specific bank account or financial mm -hmm. instrument? Right. You go, well, I, I want this bank account numbered one, two, three, four, five, six to go to Jane. Well, what if they switched banks? And yeah. now it's six seven eight nine ten is the is the account number not the other number so it's a different bank if it's referencing it went from td to royal bank right so does the gift fail can we trade so you get into all all those particular issues so don't just make an assumption as an executive to say well i think this is what they intended because if you if the gift is given and you go well i think they they, they opened up a new bank account, so I'm just going to give that money. You may find yourself in hot water with the residual beneficiaries who say, well, you had no legal basis to give that money from that new bank account because that's not what the will says. Your obligations arise from the will. 
right? So now maybe a court can intervene and 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 fix it, but that's where you just got to be a little bit careful. And 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 again, a legal opinion would be required of can I do this or do I need direction or does the gift fail? Uh, does it does it stop at at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, another example, just to spark some some different ideas, would be, well, what if they talk about um, all the proceeds of my registered retirement savings plan um, goes to this person, um, but then at 71 they're mandated to convert the RRSP into a registered retirement income fund, so a RIF, uh, as is commonly referred to. So RRSP to RIF. Well, it's a completely different plan. It's probably got a different account number. It, you know, it's in law. It's a very different thing. A whole set of different rules apply to it. Well, but they didn't update their will, or maybe the will didn't say this riff and any and 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 it can be traced into anything converted. You know, from an RSP to a riff. Hopefully, if it's drafted properly, we accommodate that situation. But if they draft the will at when they're 69 and they die at 75, well, does the gift fail or does it not? Right. And and that can that can create an issue of just, well, where is that asset that is specifically in in mentioned in the will? Well, and I think that brings up some some common situations where you know an RSP may have a beneficiary designated right on the contract itself. And then when the institution converts it um, with the client to a to a RIF, maybe they forgot to fill in the the beneficiary designation to carry over to the same for the same yes. party to benefit. And so that's a gap too, and that needs to be remedied if it was intention, if it was the testator's intention to in fact um, give that RSP asset, which turned into a RIF to the same beneficiary. So all these types of issues, um, you know, could lead a, an executor to seek legal advice. That's that's our, you know, ultimate recommendation that if you are dealing with these types of issues, call Gordon, he's great. <laughs> Um, but just to tread carefully, because you never know, uh, you know, where that asset is supposed to go if if it's missing. And I think take reasonable steps to locate the assets. Yes. You know, I mean, that would be the other thing is what if the grandfather clock, they they look in the house um, and it's not there, but maybe they put it in storage or, you know, it's at the repair shop and they don't bother to trace it and find it and 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 don't take appropriate steps. So part of the obligation of an executor is to secure and make the assets safe. Um, so that means you've got to, you know, there's not a an exact checklist in every situation. So a little bit of common sense, but you are, you have a legal obligation is to preserve those assets and, and, and do what's reasonably required uh, to find them, right? Um, and, and to locate them. And that that may be hard. I mean, it might be a lot of work and some expenses associated with that, but that is your obligation. If you fail in that, now you're opening yourself up for some liability to say you didn't search long enough, right, uh, with with regard to it. So for the most part, you go, oh, you die with stuff um, at your known financial institutions or the things that are in your home. But people could have multiple residences, mm-hmm. right? You know, they got property in BC. What if the grandfather clock is in the cabin in Invermere? Um, well, you got to go find it, right? So it means road trip to Invermere to go, you know, secure that asset and and make sure it's covered. So I think, um, you know, if things are lost, you have to, you can't just say, oh, well, I can't find it and move on to the next task. Like, you, you, you know, you've got um, you, you've to take appropriate steps to find it, which maybe is a bit unsettling insofar as it's not a black and white answer, right? Um, the old adage, right? Lawyers live in the world of gray, uh, <laughs> that, that, because it is gray, right? There isn't, uh, you know, an exact science to this, but I think the theme is you have to search out and certainly find those assets. Um, and if, if they cannot be found and you've confirmed ultimately what happened to it, and there would be some evidence of that, then, that principle of redemption can kick in and go, okay, well, then that person, um, you know, that the, the gift is lost, right? Um, and because that's going to be under scrutiny, if the beneficiary is upset and files an application to the court to say, you, you know, you, you didn't do a good enough job, there may be some liability, which is, you know, we, we want to make sure we keep our executors safe. Uh, and then you take reasonable steps to protect, find, and then protect those assets, right? Because you have an obligation to do so to the, you're accountable to the beneficiaries for those efforts. 
Absolutely. Well, I think those are some great final comments, Gordon. Um, thank you everyone for listening. Please subscribe to wherever you listen to podcasts and we'll see you next time.